So hi everybody, Robin Hawk um, on Page Life Chicks in the Garage. So this episode we're gonna do something really pretty quick and simple, hopefully, crossing our fingers, because you can always run into problems with even the simplest of jobs, which I have found out over and over and over again. So anyway, today um, I actually went to meet a new friend and I rode down to the beach, which was lovely. Then I get there and I realize that the floorboard that's here um, the chrome cover on the floorboard was half off, which is actually really dangerous because you don't necessarily think about it, but that thing could fall off and then fly into the traffic behind me, cause an accident. So it's really important that you check those things. I'm going to be honest with you, I've certainly never checked. My bike is a 2007 and we're currently in 2020. So to be really honest, I probably should have checked those um, because rubber is what they're held on by, little rubber, um, um, I don't necessarily know what you call them, but rubber pieces that basically hold it onto the actual frame. And that rubber, as we all know, can dry rot, which is what happened here after they get really aged. So probably about six years in, you should probably check that, wiggle it around, make sure it's still nice and springy, because those rubbers can also go flat. And then your floorboards, if you have these type of floorboards, then won't be springy um, to your foot. So when I saw that, I realized I gotta get that fixed. So I'm gonna fix that today. And I have a great new rating system that I came up with, wing nuts. Now that might seem strange because there's not a lot of wing nuts on a motorcycle and maybe some of you don't even know what a wing nut is, but we also joke about people who are a little crazy are wing nuts. So here's the rating system. One wing nut is, eh, no problem, you got this, no experience, you look at the directions, you got this, minimal tools required. And then we go all the way up to five wing nuts, which really means, ladies, you're a wing nut if you try this by yourself. So I'm gonna rate this one one wing nut before I start. I've already done the other one. Let's see what happens. So the first thing that we're gonna do is, first of all, these do fold up for safety reasons. If your bike were to fall over, hopefully not. Um, if you stay shiny side up, rubber side down, you don't really have that problem, but they do fold up. So underneath, there are two bolts that are there that we're gonna take those off. And then I'm gonna to go to my workbench and I'm gonna go ahead and do it on the workbench. On the directions, it does say to do it here, but for me, I know I don't have a lot of room because of, of these, and I'm really not comfortable with doing that. And the other one I did at the workbench, and it worked totally fine, super easy. So that's how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to show you the full project today. Fingers crossed. Let's see how this goes. So the first thing I'd like you to really see is that we have a bunch of different tools here. These are pretty standard tools. I have them out and at the ready. I don't necessarily know that I'm going to need all of them, but I do want to have them ready. So here is the old floorboard. Notice uh, this was the one that I actually took off so that it's not as broken. The one that fell off was pretty broken. These rubbers were so dry rotted they were broken off uh, in a lot of the places. So there's the old one. New one's still in the package. So I'm going to take that out of the package have it ready to go. Notice those brand new rubbers. Um, they hold that baby in place and that's really all it is, which is surprising, right? You would think there would be more. It's really not. So we're going to go ahead and um, this is a handy dandy little magnetic tray that we're going to put our bolts and nuts in so we don't lose things. Um, our handy Allen wrench, which is like pretty much everything on the motorcycle. And we are going to be using um, this is what we call a box wrench, right? Open end because it has an open end, ah, right? And this is a box wrench, which is a super handy tool that my husband had around. I'm like, why are you hiding this from me? It's still a box wrench, but it's a closed end and it's a ratchet end. So you can twist it, which is good in some of those spaces. Once you get things loosened, you don't want to like really hard bolts that are really tough to get off. You want to loosen them with this one first. Um, using that closed end if you can, and then use this after to loosen those babies up. Okay, so we're going to take these pieces over. We're going to take that floorboard off, bring it over to the workspace, and see what we can do. So follow me. So luckily we only have two bolts here, so we're going to put our Allen wrench in. And the reason why we need two of these is because 
there's a bolt on one side and a knot on the other, which means you gotta turn them um, in order for it to come off. If you don't hold one side, all it's gonna do is basically turn and turn and turn and turn and you're not gonna get anywhere. And you're gonna sit there and wonder, why am I not getting anywhere? Because it just keeps turning. So, in order to unloose it, we could turn either side to get it loosened up actually. But this wrench, box wrench will hold it. And I finally think I got it unloosened here a little bit. There we go, now we're moving. I guess I think I was going the wrong way there. Ended up getting it tighter instead of looser, which happens to me a lot because I don't necessarily think the same way as somebody who's been doing this forever. So again, you all know that I'm still learning. For whatever reason, I sort of think in direct opposite of what I'm supposed to all the time. I'm not sure why. That's just the way my brain works. So what we can do though, is if it makes it easier, we could use the ratchet one. So now that we have it loosened, unloosened a little bit, we could put the ratchet one there and then we could do it like that. Make it a little easier on ourselves. Whoops, that happens a lot to me too. <laughs> so it helps if you, I do know that, it's because I don't have a lot of hand strength sometimes, so I don't put as much pressure on the wrench in the direction of the bolt. So sometimes it will slip off really easily for me. And I notice that it really doesn't do that for my husband. So the bolt came right off. Yep, there we go. So we're all good. We're gonna put it in our little mad night tray. See how nice it is? It doesn't fall out. No losing these ones. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. We are going to get it unloosened a little bit and then we can use our ratchet. This is really not difficult. Um, I did the other side thinking that it was gonna be super, super, whoops, super challenging. And um, to get these little rubber, um, I don't know what you necessarily call them, grommets. Uh, I, I don't know what you really call them, but um, they basically just hold it. And they weren't really as bad as, nearly as bad as I thought that they were gonna be to get off. So that's real loose. I'm just gonna go ahead and use my fingers because they're the best tools there are and get that the rest away, putting it into my magnetic tray so I don't lose it. And that is it that's holding on your floorboard on your motorcycle. So I'm gonna pull it down and hopefully there it is. So it comes off. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave these tools right down here because I'm gonna need them down here again to put it back on. And literally to put it back on, ladies, all we're gonna do is fix the top of it, get the top of it back on. We're gonna put it back on its little bracket and then we're gonna screw those right back in and it's gonna be good as new. So let's go up there and take a look at what we have to deal with to get these rubber pieces off and then we'll get the new one back on. Now, when I did this before, I really found that for me, again, I can't say this enough. You know, my husband does things one way. I do them totally different. It's because I don't necessarily have the strength he does with his hands. I don't necessarily have the expertise that he has. So I kind of have to do things the way they work for me. So he gave me a variety of the tools to try to see what works best for me. And to be honest, it was these cutters and literally just grabbing onto the rubber pieces because I don't need them anymore and pulling them right out, which honestly, if they were new and they were fresh and they were the way they were supposed to be, that really shouldn't be the case. They should be a little bit harder than that to get out. We're on number three here of four. There are four of them in there. Last one, and they're out. So now we are free from all of the old and ready to put on the new one. So this was a cool trick, and I also want to point out, when you do order these, these come in a kit. So the two of them come as a pair together, and they're not sold separately. But it gives you a very quick little instructions, and basically it tells you to use some dishwashing, dish, I can't talk tonight either apparently, some dishwashing soap uh, on the new rubber pieces, and they'll slip right in. 
So I thought, ooh, I don't know, that sounds like it's gonna be a lot harder than what they're making it sound. But to be honest with the last one, it wasn't bad at all. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And basically we're gonna put a little soap on each of these and then we're gonna push it down, flip it over and try to work at pulling them through. And then we are done. This is not so bad, right? Of all the things I've been doing, I've been changing handlebars and doing all kinds of things. So this is actually quite a lot easier than a lot of the things that I have been learning on in the garage, which let me tell you ladies, it's hard sometimes. Sometimes they're easy. That's why I came up with the wing nut system. I'm going to tell you, I just did my handlebars and I'm going to tell you, it's a five wing nut on that. I am a crazy lunatic for trying it. I loved every step of it, but I will tell you, you never want to try a five wing nut item by yourself. So we put the soap on, that makes it slippery. It's like a lubricant. All of you ladies that wash dishes ever, ever, uh, that's not me. I'm not doing that, but I have in the past. So, so that makes it nice and slippery. So we're going to put it right on there, just set it on, kind of give it a little pressure. Okay. We're going to flip it right over and you can see actually that the black is poking, the black rubber is kind of poking up. So we're going to go ahead and I found last time just really almost using my hands was the easiest way. So we're going to squeeze it a little bit and then we're just going to kind of pull it. And that was really the magic touch and they start to come up. Done. Easy as that. So we're going to continue a little pressure. It pops a little bit up through and the soap really helps. And we just kind of pull it around. Now, I also like this tool. These little things are the handiest things. I've been using them a lot. You can gently pull a little bit with these too. If you don't really have the finger strength or you're looking for a tool to help you, you can definitely do that. But I'm going to tell you what, I tried that first because I like that little handy tool and my fingers were working so much better. So here we are, we just pull side to side a little bit. You want to definitely be careful because you definitely don't want to ruin your very brand new um, pads here, the rubber. So you got to be careful when you do, you don't want to rip it. So last one, almost done. There we go. We are complete. The new floorboard cover, ta-da. Perfect, right? Nice and springy when I put my foot on it. Not going to be fallen off when I head down the road. So now I'm just going to put this right back on and then this project is going to be complete. So we're going to bring it over. And as I mentioned, all we're going to do is I'm going to sit back down here on the floor right next to it. Getting on the floor is way easier. Um, I have a little stool, which is nice now. And basically I'm just going to make sure my brackets are ready. I'm going to go ahead and put it right on where I took it off from. And sometimes putting it on, I did find was a little bit trickier than taking it off because you do have to make sure your bolt holes match up so that your bolts will go through. And you kind of like wiggle it, there we go. And you just literally gen just gently push it through, wiggled it a little bit to get it lined up and it's all good. Now remember, again, these fold up so that certainly does help. And sometimes you gotta get, move yourself around to get the best vantage point you can. So I'm working on getting this back one in, which is a little tougher because I can't see as well back here. And also I'm gonna tell you, what I have learned is that you really just have to trial and error sometimes and not everything is like super easy, but this project is pretty simple. So this one is giving me a little bit of a hard time because it's like I'm having a hard time finding my actual bolt hole, but I'll get there. There we go. See, not too bad. So now all we're going to do is put these back on. I kind of missed part of the hole and you can definitely tell you want to double check of course and then you can start putting your bolt back on just with your finger first one on the second on and then we are going to go ahead and tighten them up using our Allen wrench to hold it in place. And then we could use our ratchet to tighten them up.
If that doesn't work to get in there the way you need it to, you can always go to your box end to get in where you need to, to get things moving in the right direction. There we go. Now this time it's gonna be easier for me to pull up with that, so until I get things going. Again, you kinda of have to fiddle around. Oh, sometimes I think my husband is like magical. He does these and they just never slip off and they're always perfect. And he never has a hard time keeping the wrenches in place. And again, I do think it has a lot to do with the ability um, to put a lot more hand pressure than I have. And I just, you know, I don't have that much pressure to put. So I have to kind of work things a little bit differently that work for me. And, and ladies, I'm going to tell you, there are lots of things I do differently. He shows me how he does it and tells me the end goal. And then I have to work around the fact that I might not be as strong. And then sometimes I just plain out and have to ask for help. Um, and if I do, I just tell him. Thankfully, he will help me. And hopefully you have somebody that you can rely on to help you too. But if you don't, then be careful what projects you tackle on your own. And the other thing is remember that just because you're tackling a project, on your own. It doesn't mean you can't call somebody for help. You could call the shop, call for advice, call a friend. There's lots of things that you could do to get yourself help if you're trying a project and you get stuck in the middle of it. Heck, you could even ask me a question and I probably will not know uh, unless it's a project that I've already done. But if you were to comment on one of the videos and tell me that you needed help with something, I certainly can ask and maybe direct you to someone or you can always find YouTube videos on a lot of things from actual experts. As you know, I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be. So we are all set there, and then we just flip it down. Project done. We now have new floorboards, safe floorboards for my feet, and it was a one wing nut kind of job. Not a crazy person to take it on by yourself without experience. You can do this job, ladies, all by yourself. So that's it today for uh, Chicks in the Garage and Robin Hawk. Peace out, ladies.